Ken Stabler played in the NFL for 15 years and was front and center in some of the greatest games in NFL history. In 1972, there would have been no immaculate reception if it wasn't for the Snake's long touchdown run just seconds before it. Famous games with names, Snake was always cool. From the ghost to the post, to the holy roller. You roll it out there and, you know, this ball comes loose in the course of the sack and Pete Banizak dives at it at about the, I don't know, seven or eight yard line, knocks it down inside the five and Casper comes along and inadvertently kicks it three times. <laughs> Stabler threw for nearly 28,000 yards, fired 194 touchdown passes, and was named to the 70s All-Decade Team. He was an NFL MVP, and in 1976, he led the Raiders to their first Super Bowl win. Raiders return to the stadium built in response to their dynamic rise, the Oakland Coliseum. Cross-country travel left the Raiders' outstanding head coach John Madden and his skillful aides just five days to prepare for Kansas City. It was time enough for these thorough professionals. As strange as it seemed, home plate was the place to cross when the Kansas City Chiefs rolled into Oakland's combination baseball-football stadium last week. Unfortunately for the Chiefs, it was the powerful Raiders who would do most of the plate crossing on this day. Ken Stabler and Fred Belitnikoff teamed up early on a 46-yard pass and go. And from there, the silver and black win. Stabler to rookie tight end Dave Casper resulted in a juggling touchdown of the typical Oakland miracle type. The Chiefs five and six man front challenged Stabler to pass and Kenny consistently met the dare. This time on a thread the needle catch by number 49 Mike Ciani who was a bit shaken up but otherwise all right. Ken Staber and Dave Casper executed the finishing touch to make it a 27 to 7 Raider Rampage. Although Oakland's Ken Stabler completed only five passes they came when they were most needed like this first down arc to tight end Bob Moore. The snake finished the job himself when he rolled out around the end and tumbled to a 7-0 Oakland lead. From the next play, the snake reared back and struck on a six-pointer to number 21 Cliff Branch to give the silver and black an inspirational victory. Inspirational because it was the first time the Steelers have been shut out in 146 home games dating back to 1964. Raiders 17, Steelers nothing. Preparing for his 200th consecutive start, Double O Jim Otto warmed up to face the Cleveland Browns for only the fourth time. A field goal made it 10-0 before Oakland came back when Ken Stabler concluded an 11-play, 71-yard drive with this 11-yard scoring strike to Fred Boletnikoff. Santa Jim Otto, sixth-year veteran guard George Beeler, third-year tackle John Vella, and Pro Bowl performers Art Shell, number 78, and co-captain Gene Upshaw, number 63, gave near-perfect protection to a surging attack sparked by Clarence Davis's extra effort score. Twice, the mighty Raiders overcame 10-point deficits while ringing up 445 yards and a record 90 offensive plays.
And Kenny Stabler increased the Raider advantage to 30 to 17 when he hit Cliff Branch in the end zone on a play which nearly ignited hostilities in this bitterly fought battle. In San Diego, Coach Madden's wandering war wagon was on the road for the fourth time in five weeks, and the defense was angry. On offense, the snake struck twice, once to Cliff Branch, whose style is a flash of light, a puff of smoke, and gone. The second scoring strike went to tight end Bob Moore, giving the Raiders a 14 to 10 win and up their record to four and one. In week six, the tough Cincinnati Bengals jumped to a 14 to three lead. Ageless George Blander, oldest player in NFL history, kicked two field goals to keep the Raider attack moving. His second sure shot put Oakland ahead 23 to 21. But the Bengals bounced back and led 27 to 23 with but one minute 36 seconds to go. Daring comebacks are a Raider trademark, but the silver and black needed more than just a field goal. With practiced calm and poise, Ken Stabler marched them goalward. Although playing without timeouts or huddles, the disciplined, determined Raiders, to a man, were rivers of ice water, cold, relentless. Finally, the game hinged on a few seconds, a few plays, and Raider Radio's Bill King described it this way. All right. Siani is back in, slotted right inside Volodnikov, Brads to the left and a double wing. It is third and ten, backpedaling Stabler looks, he's in trouble, but he throws. Siani makes a catch on the five, he's driven out of bounds, one yard line. Holy Toledo, it's first and goal to go for the Oakland Raiders on the one yard line of the Bengals. Remember, there are no timeouts left. They've got to line up without a huddle. Thirteen seconds left to go. Will the Raiders be denied on the brink of this touchdown? Branch goes to the left, double tight ends again. What a critical situation of drama here. Here's Stabler, under center. Gives the ball to Smith. Smith running wide to the right. The five, the three, the two. Touchdown, Oakland! Charlie Smith scores. The Raiders take the lead. Eight seconds remaining. Hubbard's act was followed by still more fireworks. Now back to pass, Stabler after a fake has got time, he's throwing deep for Branch behind Taylor, he's got it to 25, the 20, the 15, he's at the 10, veers away, touchdown Raiders! Well, it's exhibition season revisited. Bruce Taylor didn't get burned, he got absolutely enveloped in a conflagration. Cliff Branch just singed his tail by seven yards, and Stabler hitting him on the button, was on the throwing end of a 64-yard touchdown pass to Branch. A short score by Pete Batizak, and then this Ken Stabler to tight end Dave Casper hookup brought the silver and black surging into the lead at 28 to 24. In Denver, the Raiders were undaunted by Rocky Mountain winter. Even in snow, John Madden's forces were ready. Twice, Ken Stabler superbly used the seconds earned by his fierce blockers to find sure-handed Fred Bolitnikoff for scores. These helped Bolitnikoff become the first player in Raider history to score 60 touchdowns. The second time the silver and black had the ball, Stabler's nine-yard streak to Cliff Branch made it 14-zip Oakland, and it looked like the route was on.
or Ken Stabler and Cliff Branch made one last bombing run to wipe the Broncos out 28 to 17. A loss which for Denver virtually wipes them out of the year's playoff picture, dropping their record to three, four, and one. Back in sunny Oakland for the season's ninth week, the Raiders faced the Detroit Lions, who saw their own four-game win streak demolished as Bubba Smith and number 86 Gerald Irons crashed in. Then the silver and black blew the game open when Ken Stabler hit number 21 Cliff Branch, who made a good diving catch in the end zone. The Stabler-Branch connection continued to wax prodigious on this 36-yarder and once again brought back the memory of the big bombing run days of Daryl LaMonica and Warren Wells. In appreciation of his blockers, Marv handed the ball to center Jim Otto, who looked like he's been spiking balls all his life as the Raiders roared over the Lions 35 to Charger defense stifled Oakland the entire first half, except for a single play, as Snake Stabler and Cliff Branch took advantage of a momentary letdown. A repeat of that play shows the Chargers in perfect double coverage, but the recipients of some one defender simply falls down, another is screened off by an official. Cliff Branch saluted 60 yards and a 7-0 Oakland lead, and then the defense took over. While the Broncos were chalking up the rushing yardage, Ken Stabler and Fred Belitnikoff were connecting through the air. For the day, Fantastic Fred had eight receptions for 121 yards and two scores. The first on this 34-yarder and tied the game at 10-10. Man of the hour, Fred Belitnikoff, whose second score pulled the Raiders to within three at 20-17. In the end, that was all the Denver defense would allow as the Broncos stunned the playoff-bound Raiders in a game that meant little in the standings, but returned a measure of respect to the men from the Mile High City. Despite Ken Stabler's two touchdown passes, the league's longest 1974 winning streak finally ended 20-17. The New England Patriots paid for that loss as they too found that on the gridiron highway, Speed does kill. Trailing by three points, Ken Stabler took the field, and just one heave later, the Raiders were on the board. League leading receiver Cliff Branch was the target, and after 67 real quick yards, the Raiders led seven to three. But the Patriots came back with another field goal, and Ken Stabler looked to Clarence Davis for drive sustaining yardage. Right after the first quarter, Stabler reached to number 25, Fred Belitnikoff, for a touchdown that boosted Fred's career reception totals to over 7,000 yards. 1.26 left in the first half, Jim Plunkett fumbled, and Stabler seized the opportunity with a TD flip to number 88, Bob Moore. And Ken Stabler and Fred Belitnikoff squeezed 26 very professional yards out of the field and the Raiders were on the move again. Seven plays later, Oakland was up by seven as Stabler drilled Cliff Branch with his fourth touchdown pass of the game and the 24th of the season.
Last week, the Raiders dusted off some of their big guns when the Cowboys came to town. Up from his bench spot, where he's been resting since Oakland clinched, came Ken Stabler, who fired fingertip high to Fred Boletnikoff in the end zone. And then just before halftime, the snake struck with Dallas Poison to 23, Charlie Smith, and Oakland led 16 to 9. The Oakland Raiders were to pro football what Blackbeard the Pirate and his motley crew were to the open seas. And the silver and black's ominous image was frighteningly evident when they hosted the Dolphins in the opening round of the playoffs. When we came out for that game, there was more excitement in the stadium than I ever heard anywhere or felt anywhere. And everyone had a black handkerchief and from the pre-game warm-ups, they were wired in Oakland. We were playing the Dolphins and it was gonna be big. I'm excited, the team's excited, we're gonna get them and all this stuff. And we kick off, you know, the opening kickoff crescendo, you know, the like, ooh, 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 whap, we kick the ball. They get the ball, and boom, all the way back. He runs, I think it was Nat Moore, ran it back 100 yards. And now here we were, you know, Black Sunday, Raiders, Revenge, Dolphins, get them in Oakland, fans, crazy, team, crazy, good, gonna do it. And the opening kickoff in our park and they run it back all the way so now it's seven to nothing you know and the fans haven't even sat down yet the raiders fortunes went from bad to worse when their explosive passing attack failed to ignite the raiders stuck with their passing game despite its early failure and the all-out assault of the end zone eventually paid off Charlie Smith's touchdown put Oakland on the board. And as the game wore on, the Raiders continued to focus their attention on the Dolphins' secondary. Fred Bolitnikoff's circus catch was ruled out of bounds. But Oakland's ringmaster called for a repeat performance. 13, second and 10. Stabler back. Looks left. Throws right. Belichick caught. A leaping pass. Touchdown! However, in the fourth quarter, the Raiders answer the score with their own speed burner, wide receiver Cliff Branch, number 21. They're going to air now. Here's a deep one to Branch. Deep, deep. Branch's 72-yard touchdown gave Oakland the lead once more. But with time becoming a factor, Miami called upon its punishing running attack to eat up both yardage and the clock on its way to the Raider end zone. Just two minutes remained after Malone's touchdown. I remember thinking that I wished on the scoring play that we had uh, that put us ahead. I was concerned because there was so much time left. I knew that Stabler had the capacity to take that ball back down the field, and he did. You get in a pressure situation like that where uh, every, everything's riding on a single play or two. There's no one that you'd rather have involved in that play than Kevin Stabler. He has the uncanny knack of putting a ball uh, between people and between hands and, and just being able to slip things in there from all different angles, and that's exactly what he did. With time running out, Stabler dashed Miami's hopes of a third consecutive title in dramatic fashion. There he is, fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's caught, he throws. It is! Oh, he caught it! He caught it! Stabler 
had to loop the ball up because he was hit as he threw. It looked like he might have been lobbing it into the promised land for Miami. But no, Davis got there first, and it was the Raiders' promised land. Oakland's 28-26 win evoked emotional extremes, characteristic of only the greatest of games. You'll never see a better game than this one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you'll agree. Frankly, it was maybe the greatest football game I have ever seen. It was just incredible. December 29th, 1974. The AFC Championship game between the Oakland Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers. You are there. Stabler play faking, back to set up. Going deep to Branch again, he's got a step. Touchdown Raiders! But fate would write a new ending. A rarely called tripping penalty wiped out this Raider scoring opportunity. The football itself bounced away, defying Oakland attempts at capture. Super Bowl laurels faded in a mist of heartbreak and tears. on block at about the 10 yard line and when they're conducting those football clinics a film of that one would be the perfect illustration <laughs> 